How do I start talking about this routine? I don't know what you're going to talk about. Well, I'm just going to talk about it's how about I did. History. Yeah, the history of this routine. Okay, so let's, let me put it this way. Every time I work on something new to go in my main show, which is I work on cruise ships, I do 50 minute uh, juggling shows, which means each one of them is made up of like five or six sections. Um, or if I have a smaller show, which is like 20 minutes long, 15 minutes long, um, I have to have enough blocks of my show to build up longer shows out of different juggling routines or comedy routines or bits of music or whatever I do. And for each five minute block of my show, it normally takes about eight months to a year of working on something until it's ready to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. All right, so let's take all the way back to about this time last year, October last, this time last year. I just finished up working on a club juggling routine. I performed it a few times, performed it on, uh, on cruise ships, performed it at some juggling conventions. Good response, happy with it, it's in the show. What do I work on next? And uh, it comes as no surprise to anyone that I worked on a bounce juggling routine. If you've been follow following along on uh, Instagram and actually previous YouTube videos, I've been talking about bounce juggling and buying bounce juggling balls and cleaning bounce juggling balls and things like that. So. Um, yeah, a bounce juggling routine, and I started working on it. Um, I started thinking about it last year, like October last year, um, and started working on it a lot more in earnest in uh, in December and January. I started looking at different tricks that I wanted to do. I work on juggling routines in blocks, sort of like things that I do first, okay? And the first thing is just finding tricks. What is interesting to show on stage? I don't normally start off with a piece of music or anything like that. I start off, what is interesting about this juggling prop? Be it a diabolo, or balls, or clubs, or rings. For example, with my ring routine, I wanted to talk about the different dimensions of it, where they can flip in this way and flip in this way and flipping this, you know, it all rotate and also color changing. And so I structured my entire routine like about, you know, with ring juggling, about the flipping the rings in different ways, turning them around and the different colors. So I always kind of like have a thing that I want to do. So when I get together, I just make a long list of lots and lots of different tricks, interesting tricks of different styles, different things that I just like tricks I've made up, tricks I've seen other people do, loads of different things and find what I like to juggle. Because if I'm going to be juggling this routine, I'm going to be working on it, like I say, for eight months and I might be performing it for another five, ten years or something. Like the oldest juggling routines that I still perform on stage now, I came up with in 2001, 2002, that kind of area. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this. So I have to like it and I have to be impressed with it. So that is step one, lists and lists and lists and lists of tricks. And then I start grouping those tricks into different categories. This is sec like into these different sections which have, like they logically fit together. And then out of these things where tricks logically fit together, I build them up to tell a story. What what is the essence of the prop? And I always just start off with sort of like a single throw, like with my ball routine, with the three balls, it just goes cross, cross, I'm even saying cross, you know, cross. With the ring, I just have one ring, throw it backs and forwards. With the, with the clubs, I just flip two clubs in my hand. I kind of show what it is about the object, which is interesting. And with the ball routine, of course, you've seen the ball routine. If you haven't, Go watch the ball with a previous video here on my YouTube channel. Go watch that, come back, because I'm going to explain step by step what goes through. So section number one is explain the prop. I start off just throwing in the air and people go, ah, oh, the ball's in the air, a nice shower pattern. And then of course the essence of the juggling prop with the balls is a bounce. So I just go psh, bounce, comes down onto the ground. And then it's just the shower. The first section is a shower and cascade with different bounces. But um, I need to always stop around about 30 seconds into a routine, 20, 30, 40 seconds in, I have to stop without dropping because that's my first applause point. But just doing a bounce cascade isn't so good. So there's a, a spin where you throw the ball and you put some English on it, some spin on it, and it spins and it bounces at a different angle that you're not expecting. I do this chop and it puts the spin on it and it comes back and I catch it. And people are like, ooh, that's exciting. What happened then? It went in one direction and bounced back in a different way. And um, I also end the routine with that because it's a little bit of like, ooh, what was that? I want to see that again. And then I save it for the very last bounce and the very last catch of the, the last throw, bounce and catch of the whole routine. It pays off something that I put at the beginning. And then just to go through these different sections of tricks, I have the uh, columns. I do a multiplex into columns. There's a whole section of columns. Then there's a short section where there's like some triangle stuff where the balls are going down, like down out like this. And I end up with this kind of triangle trident shape thing. And um, there's a one handed section. There's a break. People start clapping and then the music cuts out when I go doo -doo 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 -doo. and then I'm back into another section, which is box section. I do the under the leg section and I finish by going back to a shower and a cascade that I started with 
with, so kind of reflecting the start, kind of rhymes with the start of it, so end with the English catch and finish. That's the routine. And each one of those sections builds like a little bit more vocabulary so nobody's lost. I don't start off bamboozling with people with the most impressive trick that I can do. I, li I do the opposite. The last thing that I do is probably the most impressive, or the second last thing that I do, which is the under le the leg section, is, uh, is quite impressive, and then uh, finish off. Any questions about the structure of the routine? No, makes sense. Makes sense. So also, also, it's easy. It's like good for you. You warm up into it. Yes. And then, like it's it's like a, a good pinnacle to end with the most difficult thing. Okay, this is really important. What was the function of this routine in my show? I have to have a cold open. I can't start with the most important, uh, difficult trick. I have to start with the easiest trick because if I can, I'm going on stage without any warm up, and this is going to warm me up for the whole second. This is the opening of my second show. So some people have seen me before. Half of the audience hasn't seen me before, and uh, yeah, I need to kind of find a way to open the show. Diablo is fantastic with that because you can just throw it up and you're just doing high throws for the first section. Like the first section is just throwing and catching a Diablo. That's the kind of introduction to the prop. There's no you know blind catches or you know tangles or swings. It's just keep it very simple at the start. That's why I start with a shower and a cascade and just some simple bounces there. The other thing this has to do, it has to be a classic skill, so no like weird prop or anything clever. Um, it has to, I have to do it with no warm up. And for the example, this is really important for me to do this routine. It has to fit on any stage. And this is really important for the bounce routine is that the stage can be like a really, really rubbish surface. And theoretically, this routine can still work. It looks quite simple. It has to be simple because all of the throws have to be kind of like force bounces or kind of like really exaggerated lift bounces because I designed it to be able to perform on the worst possible stages with lumps and other bits and pieces but somehow still get through it. And also when often when I'm working on uh, ships there'll be stuff around with me like a few cruises ago I had to perform and there was a massive piano there and I was like they're like can you do you, do you have anything that can fit in front of this piano for your second show and I was like yeah the bounce routine it's designed to to fit in that. When I was practicing this I was actually practicing it downstairs at the bottom of the stairwell here in our apartment. There's, there's, if I drop the balls, there's no stairs for them to go down. But it's actually a really small area. And I was like, if I can perform this routine in an area which is about this wide front to back, and about this wide to this wide, or whatever it's gonna be, like a very small area on stage, if I need to make it bigger, I can, but I often perform on small stages. So that's the function of this routine. Open the show, cold, no warm up, fit in any space, not too technically difficult, but ramping up through so I warm up as I go through and uh, do it. Yeah. Question? And you also didn't want to have to carry around any like bouncing. Yes, thing, that's right? so important. Yeah. yeah, I actually, that's the thing. I mentioned it in that previous video, bouncing at a different angle. Can I do a bounce routine in a place where bouncing isn't normally possible? I don't want to carry literally a slab. It's, uh, it's really tricky as a bounce juggling and that's why this routine is simple and so I had to make it interesting without the technical juggling difficulties that's why the shapes and the concepts are so clean and clear and there's not a lot else going on except the pure bouncing and movement. The next step which is step three you've got the tricks you've put them into order the next is just practicing like I say down in the cellar practicing a lot a lot a lot a lot and this is before I'm listening to any music or doing anything like that because I need to work out what works so for example some tricks turns out a little bit too complicated I was wanting to do this thing, this multiplex where I have three balls in my hand and I throw them down and catch them all again. It looks great. Visually probably not as stunning as it should be, but uh, but also just too difficult. And it was never going to work on different surfaces. The surface has to be perfect and I have to be dialed in. And I, it's like, okay, that's too difficult. That goes out. A few other things didn't go out. A few other things linked together in more interesting ways, discovering it. But get out the way. All of the tricks that aren't, go they're not going to be in the final thing at this stage before you do the final choreography. But before you do the final choreography, of course, you need to find some music. So I signed myself up to one of the open stages in the work in progress shows at the Catapult um, Studios here in Berlin. And there I knew, I knew that the bounce, that the, the floor is like this dance floor, it's this rubber mat. It's an absolutely terrible, terrible um, surface, like the literally the worst surface. And I thought, if I can pull off a routine on this surface, the whole concept of this routine is going to work. It didn't really work mainly because the surface was way worse. So I was like, okay, that's that's below the minimum of the floor uh, level that I can actually juggle on. But I needed to find some music. So literally the day that I was gonna perform, I was looking through lots of music. I'm gonna perform this evening, what can I find? And I knew I wanted it to be some kind of piano music, a bit more classical, not too, not too modern in a way. But in the end, I found Niels Fram, who has this, we have one of his live albums, and there's a track called Hammers. And I performed at Hammers. Here is a little bit of me performing with Hammers. Uh, it worked 
pretty much works. So then the next step is be inspired by the music. And then I juggled more and more and more with this music playing, not always to the music, because he's playing, he's playing this piano. Niels Fram is playing the piano live without like a metronome on, and the timing actually changes throughout, which is really tricky when you're wanting to keep the, the bouncing steady. But I always knew with this routine I was going to record my own music. So then I, inspired by the music, I changed the choreography, but then I started writing a new piece of music. This is what was in the, in the original uh, down here. Let me just press some solo. So that might be really loud. But this is the original music that I was going to perform to. And this is mine. I'm just skipping between the between the track. This is all the stuff that I recorded. And there's Niels Fram down the bottom. And. Uh, So I was inspired not just from the from the music that he was using, but like to inspire me to write it myself. I wanted I always wanted piano, but I always wanted beats and some bloopy bleepy uh, techno electronic stuff going on there too. And so when I was writing the music to the juggling, it could be like bounce perfect, throw perfect, and that's what creates the magic of this routine. People say, oh, quite a few people have said, oh, it fits the music really well. It's like no, no, no. I actually. I kind of, inspired by some music, wrote the juggling, and then inspired by the juggling, wrote the music to it. And it's handy that my university degree was creative music technology, which was studio production and uh, composition and things like that. And sometimes the balls are bouncing on the beat of the piano, sometimes they're with the electronic bleepy bloopy stuff, sometimes with like the bass notes of the piano, sometimes with the drums, and sometimes with the silence, like the silence cuts out at the end, like the, the, the action happens on the silence. Um, so there's, it's musically, it's complex, and, and I like to think of this routine as me playing a musical instrument, or dancing, or singing along with the music, with, my, with the bouncing balls and with the patterns of the balls in the air. And I think the effect works. Like the first few times I performed it, didn't really work, a few too many mistakes, but as it went on, it, I kind of locked in more and more and more into it. And yeah, it took me about three days to write the music to go with the juggling. Um, tell the story how you came up with this routine with different size balls and then had to change it in between. Good point. Okay. When I was starting working on this routine, I was traveling with uh, with the smallest balls possible. These are these little Dubai balls. I don't know how big they are, but really, really little. So I was uh, thinking, oh, well, I'll always just travel with these because I don't want, I didn't want a lot of extra weight in, in the bag. Until how are they? What? How heavy are you? Very light, not very heavy at all. If you just uh, feel yeah. like this, it's very light. Like a um, flummy. Yeah, so these are actually made by Dubai, um, and at, I was over at their uh, factory in New York. I don't think they're at the same factory now, but they just had a box of like, hey, here's loads of seconds, here's lot of like loads of silicon balls with errors in them, and I was like, how much just for like the whole box? So I got, <laughs> I got like a l big thing of lots of balls of different sizes, and um, so I was training downstairs with these in the, in the bottom of the stairwell, and I had always just put two of the balls or one or two balls aside at some point um, on like a little handrail down there, and then I left it. And then I was like, oh, I left the balls down there and I went down there and they'd gone and someone had cleaned them away or took them or anyway. So it got to the point where I was going to perform this for the first time at Catapult and and I didn't have enough of these balls to think, oh, if I need some spares or whatever. Um, so I tried out this the second size ball, which is a little bit bigger, but didn't have enough of them. And then, or was it these? No, I think it was maybe these ones that I lost some of. Anyway, I was switching around. So then literally the day that I was gonna perform, not only did I find the music for the first time, I switched to the larger size balls. And it's a good job I did because these are a lot more steady. When they bounce on an uneven surface, they're a lot, they just come up into the hand and stick in the hand a lot more. Just the weight of them makes them a lot more steady. In, when they're bouncing and steady into the hands in the air. And there was a trick that you yes. just told before about the that was turned out to be too tricky when you had like yeah a oh yeah that ball. was another that was yeah that, that was only another. worked with a small one no no the small balls right? where you go like this and, yeah. then, and it comes back up it's way easier with these small yeah, balls that really works and that yeah it works really well and then okay you go okay what about the these uh, medium sized balls oh do I have them here yeah what about these medium sized balls and then you're like okay still working <laughs> still working and then you get to the biggest balls especially on a slightly uneven floor you're like okay you're like okay kind of working but this is this is not not really performable now was with the small balls yes it would be that's one of the reasons which brings it to performing for the first time with the real music i did that at the um is it the o uh, was it the oc23 show yes and it went okay but again i was worried about dropping because 
when I was at the catapult, when I dropped, I was like, hey, someone can sit in the front row. I can't remember who it was, um, but they can just throw me a spare ball. And that would work. And you'd think a juggler throwing me a spare ball on stage when I need one. How bad can it go? It turns out quite bad. not exactly successful. It turns out that I actually have this net that I have on my back which I use for um, catching balls in a different routine that I don't really perform anymore but I already had this so I thought well tell you what when I go out on stage I'm going to just have these extra balls in in the back of my net so I'm doing bouncy 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 one goes off no problem take it out and I'm ready to go again. This worked really well except people didn't realize that I had this on the back of my uh, on, on my back and I came out and standing there like this and I had like a jacket over it a bit and when I dropped for the first time and I picked the ball out it surprised people even other jugglers it was a juggling show and everybody laughed they thought oh that's really funny he's just got balls right there <laughs> Laughter is a valid emotion to have at a juggling show. It wasn't really what I was going for. And also I had this problem that this thing was on my back. The main problem was that at this point I still had this five ball ending to the routine, which was, so I always needed the extra, I always needed two extra balls, plus if any dropped, I'd need another one. Or if there was a third drop, I needed another one. And then if maybe I dropped in the five ball section, and I've got to the five ball section and I have three, uh, I'm juggling five balls and then I still drop, I've already had three balls, which means I'm gonna have to have what? Like nine juggling balls in total? Which was breaking the idea of having a routine where I didn't have to carry a lot of stuff around. So I did perform the five ball juggling on, on cruise ships as well at the end of the routine. Um, but even then it was, I didn't like this thing because it was always visible. And when I was wearing a jacket, it would make the jacket a bit of a different shape because it had to fit over it. So at one point I even wore a different shirt, a black shirt, so the shirt, like the jacket wouldn't have to go over the top. And then in the end, I was looking back through and thinking back through all the times that I performed this routine on cruise ships, because I performed it like, you know, five or six different gigs since June, you know, June, July, August, now in September. And I realized that I'd only dropped once ever in the three ball section. The only time that I was actually needing the extra balls for was for the five ball section, which I didn't really like anyway. It wasn't choreographed to music, it was just silent. But I then realized, ah, actually what I can do is in my, uh, in my suit, uh, like in my normal suit that I wear, I can just put the ex an extra ball here inside. Now you can actually look, see from different angles that my jacket does have a bit of an angle going over where the ball is. And it, but it turns out that I got the routine solid enough that I didn't need this. So in the last, I think, seven times that I've performed this three ball routine, since I've just, I've taken out the five ball and just doing the three balls, I've only messed up once enough that I needed an extra ball. And by that time, it was on this last gig that I just, oh no, two gigs ago, I didn't perform it on the last gig, but two gigs ago, and I could just reach in and grab this ball. And it just so happened that I was in the one handed section. So once the ball went away, I could just reach around, get it out, I had a spare hand at that point anyway that I could just get the ball. So take out the five ball section which was too much, take away the back net and just tuck the ball into the back and that's what happened because relying on people to throw a ball, it does work like at the Berlin convention, I didn't know I was going to perform in the open stage, it was a last minute thing and I was just like, hey Bjorn could you just pass me this ball if I need it, he's like great, that works but you can't rely on people to throw the balls to you um, and in the end I just got the routine good enough that if I make a mistake I have one spare but if I don't make a mistake everything's fine. So were you aiming for a certain length of the routine and did that um, drop out of the five ball section? Like, did that change anything in the time or something? Well, the, taking out the five ball section, this five ball section was always optional. I never wrote music for it. It was always sort of like, once I get the five ball section really solid, I'll be able to put it at the end. But I realized actually the structure of my show, I didn't need it. It's stronger to finish on the music. I grab the last ball, walk forward, bow, and that's it. It's less complicated, it's less, you know, it, you know, it's just, it streamlines everything. And the five balls is like, it's like out of a different routine because the music's not there. It's got a different concept around that. So like, it's nice multiplex bouncing with the five balls and it got a good reaction. But at the end for show length, yeah, it was better just to take it out. It's a lot more determined. The music starts, the music stops. Four minutes, good. The last thing that I want to say is the introduction. 
Like, how did I introduce it? At the start, I was like, what, the bo what is it called? What shall I say? I didn't want to give away that it's a bouncing routine because when people started watching it, I wanted that first bounce to be a magical moment for them to go, ooh, what's going on here? So um, I tried saying, oh, it's sort of called ball dance or bo something like that. And then I came up with the idea, inspired by Toy Story, that's not juggling, that's dropping with style. And I realized I could say that after the music starts playing and then I'm ready and into it. And it, got, and it gets a good reaction. Any last questions? No. I think that's it. A little glimpse into my brain of how I put together juggling routines. And I do this with a lot of them. I, you know, I start, work out the tricks, find some music to inspire them to like the, the vibe of the routine, perform it once or twice, write new music based on everything that's gone before, practice it loads more, start performing it, document it all the way along the way, as you can see with these videos, and finally maybe share a video online of the final version, which I haven't done for the last few routines that I've made. The magnets routine, the club routine, and some other routines I've not shared so much, but uh, maybe I will in the future. Uh, yeah, that's good.